Hey, what's that? Looks like you found a silica packet in your beef jerky. You're probably thinking, why put a thing that says do not eat in the middle of my food? Well, these little packets actually trap water from the air and keep it away from the jerky, giving you access to that delicious, perfectly dry texture you love so much. Let's take a closer look. You can see that molecules of water are being drawn towards and sticking to the surface of the silica gel. It looks like the molecules are actually being held in place at the surface by some kind of process. Looks like the process is sorption. Zoom in closer, and this process where a solid collects molecules on its surface is called adsorption. Adsorption is the adhesion of particles on surfaces. Adsorption happens when atoms, ions, or molecules attach to the surface of a substance without entering it. They accumulate at the surface of a phase and are attracted to it, but they do not transfer into the other phase. An example would be chemicals in a liquid adhering to a solid surface. It's not adsorption with a B. That's what happens when molecules are transferred into and then distributed throughout the whole substance. Absorption happens when atoms, molecules, or ions of one phase enter inside a substance of another phase and are incorporated by it, say, liquid absorbing into a towel. Sometimes we can't tell whether observed changes are happening due to absorption and or adsorption, and we use sorption to cover all bases. Sorption is absorption and or adsorption considered as a single process but often we can tell which process is responsible. A paper towel absorbs water. The water completely soaks into the paper towel. Plants absorb water and fertilizer. Scientists absorb food. Silica gel adsorbs water. The water only coats the surface, not the interior. Adsorption does more than deliver dry, salty snacks to your mouth. It plays an important role in soil and environmental sciences and is the driving force behind many different technologies and practices. For example, when farmers apply fertilizers to their crops, some of the fertilizers move out of the water and adsorbs into the soil, while some remains in the water and flows away as runoff. If we know the composition of the soil and the concentration of the fertilizer's solution, we can calculate how much will adsorb and remain in the ground for plants to use. Adsorption is good news for farmers. Speaking of runoff, adsorption can be used to remove chemicals and pollutants like excess fertilizer from wastewater before releasing it back into the water supply. Different filter materials adsorb different impurities and chemicals, leaving the output clean. Fish love adsorption. If you see a white film on your clean glasses and faucets, your house probably has hard water. Hard water is high in calcium and magnesium ions, which can react to form hard mineral deposits that can't be washed away with water. These deposits can be really hard on your plumbing, but adsorption can help here too. Ion exchange water softeners are filled with resin beads that come loaded with sodium and potassium ions adsorbed to their surface. Hard ions of calcium and magnesium trade places with these soft ions so that now your water is much easier on your pipes and faucets. Bad news for your local plumber, but good news for your wallet. Gas masks use adsorption to trap poisonous chemicals before they reach your airways. We can even use adsorption to remove poisons and toxins from ourselves. That's right, we're inside someone's intestine right now. If someone ingests a poisonous substance, Doctors and emergency room technicians can give the patient activated charcoal, which adsorbs the toxins so they can be removed from the body. Administered quickly enough, adsorption can save lives. Even your airways use adsorption to protect you. As you breathe in through your nose, your nose hairs adsorb microscopic particles out of the air and trap them before they can enter your lungs. Thanks, nose hairs and adsorption. Is there anything adsorption can't do? Disclaimer, adsorption is not a cure-all. Adsorption should be used properly and appropriately and under the correct supervision. Not all soil scientists focus on adsorption. There are other transfer and movement mechanisms that may be more appropriate for your situation. Desorption may remobilize adsorbed chemicals and adsorption may not permanently remove molecules from water. Talk to your professor or TA to find out if adsorption is right for you. Wonder how we managed to learn all this about adsorption? There's no secret, just a lot of hard work. 
Soil scientists run a lot of adsorption labs because it turns out that a lot of different things can affect adsorption rates. For example, particle size in soil has a large effect on how much surface area there is for things to adsorb to. The smaller the particle sizes, the more surface area you have. How does this work? Let's use a piece of your jerky as an example. If we cut this piece of jerky in half, we have the same amount of jerky. But now we have two new exposed surfaces. Cut each of these in half and we now have four more surfaces. Cut them in half again and we have eight. And so on and so on. The surface area increases exponentially as the pieces get smaller. Soil particle size has the same effect. Gravel has large particle sizes. Sand has smaller particles than that. Clay has even smaller particles than sand. So clay has more surface area and can adsorb more than the same volume of sand or gravel. Just like beef jerky pieces and beef jerky... dust. And particle size is just one of the many things that affect adsorption magnitudes. Temperature, solution concentration, and even air pressure can affect your results. Scientists spend a lot of time running sorption labs to help isolate these variables. How do soil particles collect phosphates? How much fertilizer is left in runoff water? How much spilled rocket fuel can be removed from a river? How much calcium is in your hard water? How much poison can charcoal absorb? And how much silica gel goes inside every package of beef jerky? You're welcome.